How much weight gain is typical for people with Hashimoto's thyroiditis? The quick answer is that individuals may gain 5 to 15 pounds on average. The longer answer is that weight gain may reach 50 pounds, depending on specific risk factors. But don't let it get you down. Maintaining a normal weight is absolutely doable even if you have Hashimoto's. These variables determine whether and how much weight you gain. The first is your diet. This is by far the most significant element in deciding how much weight gain you may expect if you have Hashimoto's disease. This covers both the quantity and quality of the food you eat. If you believe that you can follow the usual American diet after receiving a Hashimoto's diagnosis without gaining weight, you may be mistaken. Rethink your decision-making regarding your nutrition. If you want to gain a lot of weight, follow these steps. As someone with Hashimoto's, you will simply be more aware of them. Consume a lot of highly processed food. Consume a lot of processed carbohydrates and sweets. Consume copious amounts of sugar-sweetened drinks. Use alcohol on a daily basis. Limit your intake of calories. Make sure you don't eat enough protein when trying to reduce weight. Try these things if you want to lose weight or keep it off. If you want to avoid all carbohydrates, including fruit, and make sure you overeat at every meal. If you have Hashimoto's disease, doing this will almost certainly cause your weight to increase. Consume only actual whole foods. These should make up 80 to 90% of your diet. You should also consume enough of fruits and vegetables, natural fermented foods, and at least 100 grams of protein and whole food carbs each day. Consume fish no less than twice a week. You can avoid the weight gain I mentioned at the beginning of this video by making sure you don't go hungry throughout the day, eating the right foods, and developing healthy habits. If, however, you're not mindful of what you eat or actively trying to eat healthfully, you can expect to gain much more than the 5 to 15 pounds I mentioned. Yes, controlling your diet will require some effort and discipline, but it will be well worth it. A simple diet adjustment has even helped some people put their Hashimoto's disease into remission. The second factor relates to how serious your illness is. It's that simple. The thyroid controls your metabolism. Thus, the worse your condition, the more weight you will acquire. But how can you tell how terrible your case of Hashimoto's is? Although this one is difficult, there are a few things you can do to aid in your educated prediction. One consists of your diagnostic lab test. Numerous research on hypothyroidism has shown that patients with greater TSH upon diagnosis had a worse prognosis since TSH is a measure of thyroid gland function. The likelihood of having more thyroid gland damage increases with elevated TSH levels. The concept likewise holds true for thyroid antibody levels at the time of diagnosis. Higher thyroid antibody levels are linked to greater thyroid gland inflammation and consequently greater thyroid gland damage. This is one of the main reasons that, if you have been diagnosed with Hashimoto's disease, I strongly recommend that you control your thyroid antibodies. Patients with seronegative Hashimoto's disease, on the other hand, have a much easier time losing weight. These individuals have Hashimoto's disease, but negative thyroid antibodies. The amount of thyroid medicine you need is another factor. It is possible to assume that you have more thyroid gland damage if you require larger than usual dosages of thyroid medication to manage your thyroid symptoms. Levothyroxine dosages for Hashimoto's patients typically range from 100 micrograms to 200 micrograms per day. If you take less, this is a good sign. If you take more, this is likely a sign of a worsening disease state. The good news about disease severity is that it is completely manageable, indicating that you won't necessarily continue to gain weight even if you have a severe case of Hashimoto's disease. However, this is assuming that you are receiving the proper treatment, which is precisely what we will be discussing in number three. Specifically, the third factor is your treatment or what kind of thyroid medication you are taking. If you have been diagnosed with Hashimoto's disease, the main reason you are taking thyroid medication is to replace the lost thyroid hormone that your thyroid gland is unable to produce. In theory, this sounds very simple. All you have to do is take thyroid medication, monitor your TSA, 
and make sure those two factors are optimized. In the actual world, things are much more complicated than this. Your body uses more than one thyroid hormone, but when doctors prescribe thyroid medication, they only give you the weakest form of the hormone. To make matters worse, there is even some evidence that thyroid medication itself can cause weight gain. If they are, you won't gain any weight and you won't experience any other thyroid symptoms. If controlling your weight is your aim and you have Hashimoto's disease, levothyroxine is one of those, although all of them have the ability to do so. Then you should take a mix of thyroid hormones, such as T4, T3, and the more recent one. T2 research indicates that thyroid patients who transition from T4 to T3, even with an unchanged TSA level, experience greater reduction in body weight and improved management of their symptoms. This demonstrates the potency of T3 thyroid hormone in controlling metabolism. Interestingly, comparable results have also been observed with T2 thyroid hormone. In an ideal world, Maintaining your weight would involve using a combination of T4, T3, and T2 rather than just levothyroxine. It may look something like this. 100 micrograms of levothyroxine, T4, 10 to 20 micrograms of T3, often leothyronine, and 100 to 200 micrograms of t 2 s 35 diodo l thyronine are the approximate amounts. Levothyroxine alone may occasionally aid in weight reduction, but if you're having trouble losing weight or finding that you're gaining it back, you might want to consider taking a mix of thyroid hormones. The fourth factor relates to your genetic makeup. Genetics will always influence your weight gain or loss if you have Hashimoto's disease, and not just because of how they affect your chance of developing an autoimmune disease. What I really mean by this is your body's natural capacity to increase muscle mass and burn fat mass. We all know that some body types are simply more likely than others to gain weight. Therefore, we refer to those who are more likely to gain weight as endomorphs. If you happen to win the genetic lottery and have Hashimoto's disease along with an endomorphic somatype, you're going to have an extremely easy time gaining weight and an extremely difficult time losing weight. Having the seat type doesn't doom you to weight gain forever, but it does cause people with this body type to simply have a bigger appetite, different hormone patterns, and slightly different enzyme functions than you and I. They even have different movement patterns throughout the day. It's difficult to place a precise value on heredity. But getting dealt a lousy hand just means you'll need to be extra watchful of your food and amount of exercise. The good news is that endomorphs gain muscle more easily than other somatotypes, which means they have a higher metabolism. You just need to figure out how to deal with the extra fat that comes along with that extra muscle building capacity. Genetics Alone can cause weight gain to increase from 5 to 15 pounds to 30 pounds if you have been diagnosed with Hashimoto's disease. The fifth factor is how much water you retain. Patients with Hashimoto's disease are frequently surprised to learn that a large portion of their weight gain isn't caused by fat mass, but rather by water mass. In some cases, this fluid retention can account for as much as 5 to 10 pounds of additional weight, and sometimes it even goes undetected because it hides in tissues like your legs that you may not be looking at. In other cases, it's more noticeable because it's found in tissues like your face and the area around your eyes. Although it can be difficult to distinguish between fat and water, you can usually tell the difference by weighing yourself. Although the scale is a relatively bad tool for measuring weight in thyroid patients, it can be useful in this situation if you check your weight every day and notice daily variations of several pounds, which is a warning sign that fluid retention is the cause of your issue. On the other hand, if your weight steadily rises each week, that's likely an indication of the good thing about fat is that it is much simpler to shed excess water than fat. And if and when you take the proper kind and dosage of thyroid medication, you should nearly always notice a sudden decrease in that excess fluid. The sixth factor to consider is your level of physical activity and frequency of exercise. It should come as no surprise that thyroid patients who exercise more will gain less weight than those who do not. However, 
the benefits of exercise go beyond simply burning extra calories. They also have an impact on other hormones in your body, such as insulin. Combining a sedentary lifestyle with a diagnosis of hypothyroidism can lead to significant weight gain. However, exercise not only improves metabolism by boosting thyroid function, but also makes your body more sensitive to the hormone insulin. And as a result, your ability to use fat as an energy source will improve. Fatigue is a major factor in the inability of many thyroid patients to exercise or remain active. But what most of them don't realize is that exercise can actually paradoxically increase your energy. So it's not so much about killing yourself with endless amounts of extra card as it is about just being active and pushing your body to its limits. When you combine all of this, you end up with the average Hashimoto patient gaining 5 to 15 pounds after diagnosis and an additional 2 to 5 pounds annually. If they take no action, constipation and fluid retention will probably account for about half of the weight gain. However, if you alter your lifestyle, exercise more frequently, eat more whole foods, and manage your thyroid, you can maintain a lean and healthy body even after receiving a Hashimoto's diagnosis. In fact, maintaining a healthy weight should be the aim of every patient with this condition. The first step in weight loss is improving your diet. And if you'd want to see the best diets for Hashimoto's disease, I suggest watching the video below. In this video, we explore the impact of Hashimoto's disease on weight gain and what you can do to manage it effectively. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to Health Angel Solutions for more insights and tips on living a healthy and balanced life.